Welcome everyone to another episode of Willie's Ramblings and Pickup Video. Been a few places since the last time I made one of these, uh, traveling for work, uh, slowly getting back out there. But anyway, before we get started with the uh, ramblings and the pickups, a little bit of news. I found out yesterday that Nintendo is releasing a little color Game & Watch as part of a celebration that's going to have Super Mario Brothers on it, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, Ball, the Mario version, and of course a digital clock. Pretty cool. I love the Game & Watches. I always thought those were the coolest things. I don't have any of my collection. Well, I do now. I picked up one this week. But it's an awesome, they're, they're awesome little handheld uh, games, LCD games. I think they're really cool. But I did also find out that you can pre-order these over at the UK Nintendo site. Now, unfortunately, they, it's only for people who live in the UK that can get them. Uh, I had a buddy try to pre-order one. They wouldn't take uh, his payment because he was based outside of the UK. I'm hoping Nintendo of America will do the same thing, allow pre-orders of this system so a lot of more people will have access to them. Uh, limited release items are usually not a good thing if, if you if you like to collect this kind of stuff because uh, normally they're just they're sold out within seconds. But anyway, we're not, we're not I'm not going down that road because you know I've already had somebody say you know one little cheese with that wine on my Facebook page when I expressed concern about a limited item, but that's okay. People will be jerks. It's just part of doing this. But I'm pretty excited about it. So. And thankfully, one of my buddies, Sean, he actually pre-ordered me one because he lives over the UK. I'm like, oh, that's so awesome, dude. Which means he's probably eyeing something in my collection he wants in trade, most likely. <laughs> oh, there's always a motive. <laughs> anyway, what else? Oh, let's go ahead and get into the rambling section. Uh... The Odyssey 2 live stream went really well. I did have a few technical difficulties during it, which I guess a lot of people got a kick out of watching things go foobar on me. <laughs> but overall, it went really well. I had a great turnout. Uh, a lot of people have asked me to do it again, do another Odyssey 2 stream, which I plan on doing, but this time I ha I'll have my wife included with it. So we can play some uh, Smithereens, which I love Smithereens. And she likes it too, so it'll be a really fun video to make to play Smithereens on Odyssey 2 and maybe some other two-player games as well. Uh, this coming weekend, September 5th, 2020 at 10 p.m. Eastern, I'm doing the Pac-Palooza 1700. We're going to play some really awesome homebrew Pac-Man games on the Atari 7800. We'll also have a couple special guest hosts as well. We'll have Ferg from the Atari 2600 Game by Game podcast. And also, Phil, the No Swear Gamer, from the Atari 700 Game by Game podcast. So I'll be able to talk with everybody on the live stream as I'm playing the games. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun to do, especially this will probably be the last Pac-Palooza Atari that I do. Uh, so I thought it would be a kind of a neat way to end that little mini-series of Pac-Palooza games. Okay, now what else we got going on here? Oh, let's get to some places I visited. Uh, I was recently over in Lexington, North Carolina, and I ran across a really cool retro toy store there called Blake's Toys Chest. It's ran by a really young man. I guess he began when he was nine buying and selling retro toys, and it evolved into him actually getting a business and opening up a store. Holly impressive, very impressive to have, be a, a business owner at that young of an age. Pretty cool. He's got a really awesome store. A lot of great stuff in there. Uh, Master of the Universe, Star Wars, some older retro uh, toys. Lots of great stuff. So if you like collecting retro toys, uh, definitely give this place uh, a visit if you're in the Lexington, North Carolina area. Uh, I can't say enough about it. It had some really cool Star Wars items. It had like a little Star Wars movie viewer thing. I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> I also went to Huntsville, Alabama, down where they have the little space program thing going on. I, I took a picture of the Saturn V rocket as I, uh, I pulled off the side of the highway and took a picture of it real quick. I thought that was pretty cool. But I visited a really cool arcade down there called Rocket City uh, Arcade, Retro Arcade. 
It has a retro game store in the front of the arcade. A lot of cool stuff in there. You know, a lot of box Atari 2600 games and a lot of other stuff. And of course, in the back they have an arcade. It's a it's set to all free play. It's like twelve seventy five. I can't remember the pricing for an all day pass. You can come and go all day. Come and get a little wristband. If you leave, you can come back and show them the wristband and get right back into the arcade again. So you don't have to stay there the entire time. You can just buy a light. It's like a day pass thing going on. A lot of great games. Had an alien pinball in there. It had another pinball game. I think it was called Cyclone or Carnival. I can't remember. But it's one of my, it's, it's a really fun pinball game. I played that one quite a bit. I really liked that one. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right up. <laughs> I like the guy talking in the game. They had a Cabaret Space Invaders there, which I thought was really cool. Also a Cabaret Missile Command. They had Gapless, which I had to play that quite a few times because I love Gapless. I don't see that very often. Uh, of course, they had you know the Star Wars arcade machine there, which I had to play. They had Trog. Uh, what else? A Gyrus. A Jump Bug, which is another cool one. I thought it was pretty cool to see again. They also had a really cool retro, uh, not retro, really cool virtual reality area too. We wore the vest and all that good stuff. It looked really cool. I didn't do it, but it looked really awesome, uh, their virtual reality zone. Uh, they did have like little bottles of san hand sanitizer spread out all throughout the, the arcade and they were out there cleaning them and stuff after people were playing them. So you know they're taking keeping their patrons healthy pretty serious there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, also I was in town I visited a game store uh, just up the road from the arcade, it's called Gamer's Paradise. Nice little game store. I really liked it. I love all the little arcade marquees in front of the uh, cash register. I thought that was a neat little display they had going on. Has a few cool things in there. A few retro, really old games that I'm into, like Odyssey 2 and things like that. So it's definitely a cool store to check out if you're in the Huntsville, Alabama area. And then down the road towards the, towards the airport down in Madison, Alabama. There's another store down there called the Alabama Game Exchange. Uh, this guy owns this store as a trip. He's a lot of fun to talk to. He's pretty cool. Uh, he sells arcade games and retro games both. Has a really nice selection of stuff in there. Uh, he had a Gamecom still sealed, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, he had a, a Golden Axe arcade game in there for sale, which you know I love Golden Axe. Me and my wife both love that game. It's actually a really cool store. Highly recommend you check it out if you're ever in the area. So, also, oh, and on my way back uh, to my home, I passed through Chattanooga. I was going up I-75 towards Knoxville, and I saw Ed McKay's at Exit 7. So I decided to give him a stop, because sometimes you can find some great deals at Ed McKay's. And they had a, a Coleco handheld in there. They had the Sears version of it, of the football game. And it had a box Neo Geo pocket color. I love the little Neo Geo pocket color. I just wish it had a backlit screen. But it's still a pretty cool little device. It's pretty neat to see that there at MKs. So now, I think that's enough of the ramblings part. Let's get to the pickups. Well, first off, my wife got me a couple really cool face masks for me to carry around with me. She got me one of Little Snarfle Dog. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. And she also got me one that has a Tar 2600 cartridges on it. This one I really like. So when I'm out and about going to arcades and stores, retro stores and stuff, I'll have to make sure I wear this instead of my plain black one that I've got. Let's see. Also in the pickups, I got a hold of Qbert for my Game Boy. Awesome. I like picking up these arcade translations to the Game Boy. Uh, sometime I plan on doing a video showing my Game Boy uh, collection I have. I got quite a few games for uh, for it. But this is pretty cool. It used to belong by a guy by the name of Engler, it looks like. Engler. A&M. I also picked up a boxed Game Boy game called, what's this called? Navy Blue 98. The whole reason I picked this up is because it was in the box. It's an import game, and I thought it would be kind of cool just to check it out. I don't know what it is, but I thought it was kind of fun to see. 
And then lastly, but not leastly, I finally got a Game & Watch in my collection. I picked up Octopus. I love Octopus. It's, it's really cool. It's a really cool game. Now, most of the Game & Watch games I've played are the ones that are on the Game Boy collections. They have the Game & Watch collection. One, two, three, four. So that's where I'm playing a lot of the Game & Watch games. So I'm pretty happy to have one in my collection now. I think sometime I'm going to do like a top ten of my favorite Game & Watch, Nintendo Game & Watch games. This is one of them, so I'll actually be able to show an actual one for when this one shows up in the list. But I think for the other ones, I'll just have to show just the gameplay uh, from my Game Boy as I talk about them. These things are pretty expensive to collect. And the other one I really like is called Fire, where you got these little people you have to bounce across with a trampoline thing over to an ambulance. I think that's a pretty cool, that's a pretty fun game too. But anyway... That's all the pickups. Not a whole lot this time because I've not really been traveling as much as I used to. But got a few little cool pickups there. Oh, one last. You probably saw a video about this. But the PlayPal, the little uh, Sega handheld that has Master System games and Game Gear games on it. This was branded Coleco in the States. PlayPal, I, I try to research as much as possible. A lot of the sites I was finding talking about this said it came from Canada. I had a lot of people going nuts saying, how do you know it came from Canada? I don't know exactly that if it came from Canada. I just went by all these various websites I went through talking about this thing, saying it came from Canada. So that's what I did. So, if it didn't come from Canada, I'm sorry, Canada. I try to research as best I can. I need to stop doing that. I need to stop trying to be specific on where things come from and exact dates of releases because that's like open season for trolls on my channel <laughs> anyway that's enough of that so until next time everyone my mind just went blank keep it retro and thanks for watching